Hello. So, we're going to be looking at very specific points today. Very specific points of view, beliefs, ideas that real people have. I mean, there's so many to pick from. Where do I start? Well, let's start with religion. So this has to do with all religions. So even Buddhism, which Buddhism isn't considered a religion, but let's consider that too. Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, any kind of religion whatsoever. Now, what is interesting, one point that these religions share is how they all speak of principles. They all speak of how you should act, what you should do. And within that, how many people actually live those principles that the religion has I mean, really live, truly live. Now, I'm sure those who are listening, the first thought that probably came up in your mind was that of fanatics, of zealots, people who, who we believe, who have the, the appearance that they follow their religion strictly. So whether you're a hardcore Buddhist monk who lives in solitude, or you're a very fervent Christian who preaches to God and to Jesus in the Bible, or a zealot Muslim who praises Allah and, you know, I don't know, wants violence maybe, that's what we think. And, or with the last Judaism, you're a very strict, I guess, Jewish person who, you know, is very fervent and follows the law of God, exactly. So in all these cases, you know, probably one of those thoughts came up in your mind about, well, they, these people, are actually living the religion word by word, completely. They are devout advocates. They are completely committed to the religion. And this is the product of anyone that would actually follow the religion word by word. Now, what is really interesting is that even these people do not actually follow their religion word by word. And you would know this if you were to study the text of whatever religion you may be considering, whatever one, whatever one you want to take for your little exercise, the mental, mental exercise here. So what is interesting about all these religions is that they all have sacred texts that they point to. Old scripts and old written words about what to do, what not to do, and all of them. All of them have so many instructions of how to do and how to live and what to do that even many of them are either contradictory or outdated or, you know, the other ones, they don't make sense, you know, with each other. So, even these salad cases, extreme cases, they, yes, they follow some of them, some of the laws very strictly, but there are others which they don't follow. And you can see this for yourself. You can find lines in, let's say, Christianity where you're supposed to love another as yourself, right? The sacred golden rule. I mean, how many of Christians, fervent Christians, break that rule? on a daily basis, or even moment to moment. Whether it comes to treating different groups as inferior or superior, you know, and that's just one example. And you can go on picking all these other, let's say, people who are supposed to be following their religion, strictly, in different moments where they don't, where they even contradict what their sacred texts say them to do. And 
it's not hard, it's very easy to see. And so, you know, that's like, I guess the moral here, the lesson to be learned is that religion is like a person. An average person you take in this world, they're going to tell you stuff about how to live and what to do. And some of it's going to be, let's say, incorrect or misaligned or not actually what's best for you. However, some of it will be best for you. You know, we all make mistakes. We're not all correct all the time. And so that's just to show that really, like in daily life with any person, just like with any religion, only take that which is really best for you and best for others. Things that are not best for you and best for others, leave it alone. Don't apply it. And that would be actually the smart thing to do. That's common sense. And who actually does that? Do you know of anyone? Perhaps yourself? Do you? I mean, most of us, as you can tell, aren't doing that. But if we were to do that, what would be the results? We would actually be living well. We would be living what's best for ourselves and for others. And we would take what's best from everything, from every person we meet. So that just goes to show that religion is misaligned. I mean, there are good things in it that we have to take. But like with any person, there are flaws and there are contradictions and there are things which are not best. And that's okay. We make mistakes. We just simply have to learn from them. So for those who believe that they follow their religion exactly, I mean, that only shows that they haven't studied their religion actually in detail. And they don't see the, what, what's actually being said within the sacred text. And how there are contradictions and you really have to investigate and take what's the best. And if there's someone who says, well, I know the truth and I know how to live the religion exactly and perfectly, I mean, you have to look at what they're saying, analyze the words that they're speaking, see whether it is actually the case or not, whether they're actually describing how it actually is. Just like with me. Take what I said and study it for yourself. Analyze it. And investigate what I'm saying. And try it out. And that's the only thing you can do as a human being. You either completely listen to someone faithfully in complete trust, you know, without investigation, or you could investigate. And see for yourself within your own self trust about what's actually valid with information and what's not. And if you do that, I guarantee you, you're going to have quite a good result. Okay, this is Yogan, signing off. Have fun.